So this is the sibling of the last patient. This uh, young girl is five years old. Same similar kind of cataract, only maybe it's not quite as liquefied. We're starting off the same way, clear corneal incisions with the MVR blade. We're going to use the tripan blue to stain the capsule again. And now we'll wash the stain out. And we'll insert our anterior chamber maintainer. And again, to remind you of the settings, uh, we've got uh, 250 on our cut and uh, maximum 250 on our aspiration. We've just uh, cleaned out the rest of the stain and now we'll do the capsulotomy. And again, we're just going to use the minimum aspiration that it takes to engage this capsule. And we've just got the central capsule open. You can see how funny this capsule behaves. It gets real stringy. So again, you see, we're trying not to disturb the underlying lens as we go around on this capsulotomy. It's just real important not to aspirate too much because it'll pull the back lens right up through the vitrector. And we're almost to, to a size that I'll be happy with, just a little bit more here. Just a very friable capsule here. So we're turning the cutter off now. We're going to go to aspiration. Turn the cutter on. We've got a little bit of a radial extension here, so I've turned the cutter back on. I'm going to round this out. All right, so we want to try and stay away from that area as much as possible. Let's take the cutter right. off. So when you have these kind of capsular leaflets, you can't always see those, and so you want to try and aspirate underneath the capsule edge as much as possible. You see this lens compared to her brother's not quite as liquefied. We're trying to tease this out and have it follow itself out as much as possible. Uh, doctor, excuse me, there's someone asking that what kind of cataract is it like? Nuclear or the posterior polar or well, zonal just, or something. Yeah, it's just kind of a combined. I mean, most of the pacification is in the cortex here, just outside the nucleus. Okay. 
And you can see these funny opaque areas. They're like little specks here, little rocks. And here's the lens nucleus. You can see the sutures in it. Yeah, we're at the posterior suture here of the nucleus. And again, this you can see this is a really deep eye. I'm going to switch hands here so I can get up under this 12 o'clock area a little better. Okay. Got a little bleeding on the conjunctiva, I think, from the fixation forcep. Again, subincisional, always the toughest place to work. Here's that large plate coming out. You can see I'm using the cutter here to get rid of this thicker stuff. Again, we're working around that area where the capsule's out a little bit. Looks pretty good, though. I don't think we have any loose radial areas. It's just elongated. Uh -huh. But you can see how sticky that is. Look at those strands that are pulling off. All right, so at this point, we're going to... Uh, Put the viscoelastic in. I'll turn the infusion off. All right, so this is an Alcon SN60, which is uh, the same lens from the last case. It's uh, that monoblock. This is a plus 26 that we're using. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to inject this. And then uh, this young lady is a little bit older than the last patient we did. Uh, she's five. A five-year-old you figure you probably have about a year until the capsule opacifies. Uh, so she probably can uh, cooperate with a YAG laser later if needed. Uh, one, of doc one of us asking that uh, when, will, when do you prefer to, to perform the, uh, the YAG capsule to me? Well, I think that the answer to that is probably the same no matter how old they are, it's when they need it. So usually in a child, it's, I would say it's similar to an adult, although you might have a higher threshold for the visual acuity drop-off. But usually they, when the vision drops off to 2040 or 2050, you'll do the YAG. Now in a child like this, though, it's going to be a little bit different because this child's going to have amblyopia. You're not talking about someone who has 2020 visual acuity. So you're going to have to be guided by your ability to perform refraction and, and how blurry you think the, the view in and out is on your clinical exam. All right, so I've got my suture in. I'm going to dial this lens just a little bit more. They don't, these haptics don't really put much pressure on the bag, but if you have any pressure, you want it closer to where the 
irregularity is. I don't really want to manipulate this too much, but I'm going to just finish this rotation. All right, so we'll close this down, then we'll get our viscoelastic out, and then we'll put in a little myocol, bring the pupil down. So just everything we can do to help stabilize that implant. Trying to hold the lens back a little bit while I aspirate this viscoelastic. Sometimes the viscoelastic will plug the uh, vitrectomy piece, so we may have to check this and see if it's plugged or not. And it looks like we've got some viscoelastic in the vitrector, so we're going to flush it out here. There you can see the so the capsulotomy goes around, and it's just kind of egg-shaped right there, but uh, but we don't have any running edge, so that's. We're in good shape there, but we just still want to be careful with it. So you're injecting the myostat? We are, yeah. So a little air bubble, but we're, we're fine. Start to bring our pupil down here a little bit. And I'm going to take the infusion out now and we'll take a tenovicral, put in our last suture. And you can see that chamber likes to come forward. Let me have BSS on it, can you? This is a tenovicral. Right, so again, this spares you from having sutures that break or sutures that are too tight. It's a great suture for pediatric cataract surgery. And again, we're closing all of the incisions because of just the tendency for it to be leaky. So again, uh, post-operative medications will be uh, antibiotic four times a day and a topical steroid every couple hours for the first couple weeks. Now, post-operatively, these two children, ages four and five, uh, you know, they have a lot of irreversible amblyopia, but they have some amblyopia that you can recover from. So you want to start patching them as soon as possible.